I thought I'd never date again, but someone changed my mind. My breakup with my future wife was bad. Lots of crying, friends had to pick sides, and I was like, screw this. Hi, I'm Alex Griswold. We've reached the part of the story that I've already told in my most popular TikTok. How I married my high school girlfriend. So in an effort to not repeat myself, here's the Spark Notes version. Bad breakup. Two years go by. See her at a party. Go home. Read her letter. Cry. Text her. Back to you, voiceover Alex. Okay, so after the party, I'm like, maybe we can date again. We meet up a couple weeks later, talk for hours, and we kiss. She leaves again for college. We're talking again. I fly to Chicago to see her, and she ghosts me. Why? She was falling in love with someone else. Here's the worst dating mistake I've ever made. I had never been in a relationship before, but when my wife and I started dating, I knew I was in love. We'd been together for three weeks. In the movie version of my life, telling her would have been like, we'd kiss for the first time. I'd say, I love you, and she'd say, I love you too. But that's not what happened. We didn't kiss, I awkwardly said, I'm in love with you, and she didn't say it back. We both started crying. My secret girlfriend and I got busted by a phone bill. Here's how. Melinda left for college two months into our relationship, but her parents didn't know we were dating until they got their most expensive phone bill ever. Basically, we'd talk every night, fall asleep, wake up in the morning, and the call would still be going. And that would have been fine if she had unlimited minutes, but she didn't. Her bill ended up being $400, and that's how her parents found out about me. After that, we weren't allowed to date, so that was cool. Hey, mom and dad of TikTok are back. Kinda. Wait, I thought you guys said that you weren't doing it anymore. Well, we're not. But you know how like when you move out and your parents come to visit you from time to time? That's what we're doing and oh my gosh, you've grown up so much. We missed you and wanted to remind you that you are loved, anything is possible, and keep chasing your dreams. We'll see you in a bit. Here's the crazy, complicated, true, full story of how I met my wife, the beginning. Our relationship began almost exactly eight years ago, but it almost didn't. Prepubescent Alex was a self-proclaimed player. Every year I'd tell a new girl I liked her, she said she'd like me back, and then I'd chicken out and never make a move. My problem? I was a wimp, but I was homeschooled as a kid, so give me a break. And then I met Melinda. You know how when you meet someone, you can just keep both talking and the conversation never gets boring? That's what it was like. But she was leaving for college and I was staying local, so I knew she'd say no if I asked her out. My friend said I shouldn't do it. Her friend said I shouldn't do it. I didn't think I should do it, but I did. And she she said yes, and then the problem started. I broke up with my future wife, here's why. Nine months into our long distance relationship, we had three major issues. Her parents forbid us to date, long distance is the worst, and we were young and stupid. Also, I'm an emotional decision maker, so here's where it gets interesting. We were fighting on the phone, I wasn't even planning on breaking up with her, but somewhere in there I said, I don't think this is working out, and she said, what? and I just ran with it. We broke up on the phone, and even though we'd be married in six years, this surprisingly wouldn't be the last time we'd end it. Melinda's doing a voiceover, here we go. Hey, so- Wait, no, you you have to say it like a mix between Jojo Siwa and Mickey Mouse. So a little bit more like, hey! Okay, hey, so now that we've adopted Wait, all no, of no, no. We're, we're not doing that anymore. What are we doing? I don't know, we're kind of having an identity crisis. <laughs> well, anyways- If you haven't already heard it today, we love you! I rebounded with my ex-girlfriend. It was a mistake. So after breaking up with Melinda in 2013, we lasted about three months apart, and then we got back together. And I'm sure you're like, well, they're married now, so I'm sure they're not gonna break up again. Wrong! You know, I know, everyone knows it's a terrible idea to get back together with your ex. The only people that don't know are the stupid couples that do it. So surprise, surprise, after the excitement wore off, we remembered we hated each other, and after a month and a half of being back together, we broke up again. Bebe, am I a simp? I don't know what that is. It's like someone who respects women and puts them first. Oh, you mean like a gentleman who proves that chivalry isn't dead? Uh-huh. A decent human being? Uh-huh. And someone who's going to have a long, healthy marriage that's built on love and respect? Yeah. Yeah, you're a super simp. Well, you heard it here first, folks. I'm a super simp. My wife finally ended it with me on Snapchat. So as you know, our dating relationship was a dumpster fire. After like the fourth time splitting up, she started dating other people, but I didn't know this. So I come crawling back into her life and I'm thinking maybe she's the one for me. And she's thinking I have other options. And so out of the blue, we're talking on Snapchat. She goes, I don't want to talk to you anymore. We're not getting back together. And because I'm the biggest sip of the 21st century, I'm like, okay, and that was it. Oh yeah, by the way, this is from 2016. We're happily married now. I'm trying self-tanner. Results in 20 seconds. So I'm very, very, very pale. But after getting two precancerous moles cut out, it looks like Alex plus sun equals no. And so I can get people to stop calling me Casper, I'm trying this out. A few moments later, after taking a sexy Instagram, please go like it, and ruining my clothes. This is what a tissue looks like after Donald Trump uses it. Was it worth it? Absolutely not. Do you have a boyfriend? No. Can I be your boyfriend? No. Why not? <laughs> Why not? I have a husband. That That's cool. <laughs> Who is he? You. <laughs> oh. 
You might have dated my wife. Not actually, but kinda. So for everyone who's asking, this is my wife. We're married, not divorced, not broken up. We were just on and off a lot in college. Back to the story. You might have dated my wife because when we started dating for the last time, she was involved with four other guys. One never made a move, one thought he was gonna marry her, one dated her, ghosted her, and then we appeared and one just kept asking her out. But she chose me. And you know what that means? You can do anything you want when you sexy. Hey, so we're all best friends now and you're probably wondering which friend you are in the group. You're the Rachel to our Chandler and Monica, the Winston to our Jess and Nick, and the Office to our Jim and Pam. So basically, you're the one everyone likes. You're the one keeping us together and most importantly, we couldn't do this without you. So thanks. We love you. Bebe, when do you want a baby? Yes. What? I want a baby. When? Now. But like, if you had to pick a date in the future, when would you want to have a baby? Tomorrow. Oh. Don't stop watching, you did something amazing. So to be honest, I've been low-key insecure about my high voice. I'd see comments from people who don't know me be like, oh my gosh, his voice is terrible. And I'm not letting them get to me, but I'm totally letting them get to me. I tried to make a few videos with a boring deep voice and it felt terrible, but because of how supportive you've been, I realized that I like having a high voice. I like being excited and I'm excited when I'm making these videos for you. So thanks for following. Know that you did something good today. I love you so much. Here's how TikTok saved my life, again. So a couple months ago, I had a precancerous mole removed after someone saw it on my TikTok, and the doctor was like, they probably saved your life. I was on Inside Edition, Good Morning America, and BuzzFeed. It was a whole thing. And then when I was getting my stitches removed, the doctor was like, dude, another mole looks like skin cancer. So they cut that one out, and now my scars make me look like I tried to save someone's life. So basically, if I didn't have TikTok, I wouldn't have known about not one, but two moles that could have turned into skin cancer. So just remember that good people do exist, and you can change someone's life. Here's Sad stories with Alec. I had a pet crab once. It died. I applied to MIT and my interviewer said I was probably gonna get in. I didn't. I went to summer camp on my birthday and didn't tell anyone it was my birthday. No one wished me happy birthday. And that was... Sad stories with Alec! So we have 45 days to move to Canada, eh? And I'm sure you're wondering, what happens if Canada doesn't let all 1.7 million of us in? Well, we have three options. One, we create our own country where we'll build our theme park. Two, we make our own TikTok. Or three, we become TikTok famous enough to get enough money to buy TikTok. But no matter what happens, we'll figure out how to keep making you smile. Love you! I'm gonna change your life. Also, David Dobrik and I are the same person. We're basically the same age, have dashing good looks, but the only difference is David has a YouTube empire and I don't. So hear me out. What if I'm just behind and when I post my first YouTube vlog tomorrow, it's gonna be a smash hit, I make lots of money, and I bump into you on the street, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, were you one of my first subscribers? I buy you a Tesla and your life is forever changed. All you gotta do right now is follow me everywhere. It sounds like a no-brainer. Hey, so if you're watching this video, you're on the unproblematic side of the For You page, which means you can finally relax. We're kind of just chill, there's no drama, and we'll try our best to remind you that you're a really good person. So we're happy that you're here, and I hope that we'll see each other on the For You page again soon. Love you! Hey, guess what? So since there's two of us and one of you, a lot of you are asking if you're the third wheel. And the answer is technically yes. You could be the third wheel, but there are a lot more wheels on this bus. You're friends with all 1.6 million of us because everyone is welcome and everyone is happy that you're here. So congrats on being accepted into the largest friend group on TikTok. We love you. Here's what it's like having strict parents. My bedtime was at 8, so while I was getting in bed, it was still light out and my friends were outside. I didn't have a cell phone until I was 18, so I had to use a weird app on my iPod Touch to text people. I wasn't allowed to watch Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, or Cartoon Network, so I literally never understand any Spongebob references. But my parents made me who I am today, and I wouldn't trade them for the world. You're getting adopted again, for a little bit. So TikTok is probably not getting banned in the US, but just in case we're adopting you again. And instead of all of us moving to Rhode Island, we'll buy Canada where TikTok is definitely not getting banned. So grab your coats, maple syrup, and hockey sticks, and welcome to your new Canadian family, eh?